highly regarded methodology used in design, engineering, and business fields to promote business fields is known as design thinking. As shown here, design thinking consists of seven interrelated phases. The first three, understand, explore, and define, involve developing a deep understanding of the impact of the design. Included at the top of the list are the vast bodies of scientific concepts that govern the natural world. For example, the design of a flexible and strong skateboard requires an in-depth understanding of the applied forces and how the materials will deform and respond while being stressed. As demonstrated in the technical videos, you will see how 1-2-3-D design software can help anyone, regardless of their prior artistic or technical background, engage in the process of ideation. These same tools will enable you to take this or other projects of your choice through the remaining stages of design thinking that include prototyping, refinement, and presentation of final solution. Knowing how important knowledge of science is to the design thinking process, we now present the following overview of chemical bonding through molecular modeling. Atoms and molecules are all around us. This statement, while cliche, is nonetheless true. The very air we breathe with our lungs is composed of atoms and molecules. These atoms and molecules can be combined together to make larger and larger structures, such as the proteins that make up our lungs. If this doesn't make you think atoms and molecules are important, let's take a look at a problem facing society right now and how chemistry can help solve it. As you probably already know, fossil fuels are used to power much of our transportation systems. Whether it's trains, boats, or most commonly cars, they all use some form of hydrocarbons, which make up the majority of fossil fuels. This small and simple hydrocarbon is called butane. It has four carbon atoms bound together to create a carbon chain. Along with the carbon, there are 10 hydrogens bound to the outside of the carbon atoms. When we burn them, these molecules undergo a chemical reaction with oxygen, or O2. This produces water, H2O, and CO2, and a lot of heat that we convert into useful energy in an engine. Chances are, you also know that CO2 is considered to be a greenhouse gas and is generally harmful to our atmosphere which is why many scientists and engineers are trying to eliminate the common production of these greenhouse gases by creating an efficient hydrogen fuel cell. Hydrogen fuel cells can be thought of as very efficient batteries that use hydrogen to produce electricity. If we take a look at this reaction, we can see it still uses oxygen, but it only produces water and energy. This reaction goes both ways. That is to say, we can produce hydrogen and oxygen from water using electricity. This makes hydrogen a very useful energy carrier for our mobile power needs and could offer us an alternative to our reliance on fossil fuels. Chemists and biologists model objects they cannot see with the human eye, such as molecules, viruses, and proteins, in order to gain a better understanding of their structures and how they interact with their environments. In the following videos, you will learn how to quickly model a three-dimensional molecule using 1-2-3-D design in order to understand how a surfactant structure, in this case, sodium stearate, interacts with both water and oils.